Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Please stand. Find a partner with someone that you did not come here with. So please face your partner. And you're going to take a couple minutes to get a good visual impression okay. of your partner. Okay. For some of us, it'll be easier than others. <laughs> but um, you get a good visual impression. And then we'll tell you what to do next. Just turn back to back to your partner. Okay. When I say go, you're going to make five visible changes to your appearance. Ready, set, go. Okay. So when I say go, you're going to turn around one by one. When I say go, you're going to identify the five visible changes that your partner made. Ready, set, go. Okay. All right. If you identify all the five visible changes, raise your hand. You did it. What was the other one? Uh, most of you did. Very good. All right. Please turn back to back to your partner. I'm not done yet. Now, I can't repeat the direction. I can't explain the next direction. So listen very carefully. Okay. When I say go, you're going to make ten visible changes to your appearance. Ready, set, go. <laughs> All righty. So when I say go, you're going to turn around and see how many of the ten visible changes your partner's made. Ready, set, go. <laughs> I don't think I can make ten. You go first. Okay, got this. Well, and yeah. Yeah. Try to do the same thing. Yeah. And then yeah. the well, your hat's sideways. Okay. This is backwards. Okay. okay. What was it? Please have a seat. Thank you all for your time. No problem. <laughs> 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 I turned around to yeah, now we got right. <laughs> Leslie let him lead like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh no, that's fine. That was fun. That was fun. So I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. And what we're looking for is your honest and immediate answer to the question. Okay, so first question, when we asked you to make the five visible changes to your appearance, what was your first feeling and thought? Oh my God. What am I going to do? Oh my God. Yes, what am I going to come up with? What are your immediate thoughts and feelings? First five. May not be comfortable doing that. I can't find five. Can't find five. How many people felt a little bit outside of their comfort zone doing the five? Okay. How many did the five? And how many identified the five of their partner? Okay. Now, when now we started to make a change again and said, make ten visible changes to your performance, to your appearance, what was your immediate thoughts and feelings about that? I can tell you. You I can already, do it. I already good. know five of them. This, yeah. is dumb, this is dumb. Right? I already know five. Already know five. I don't have that many accessories. Don't have that many accessories. <laughs> Didn't think I could not enough clothes. Challenging. Not enough clothes. <laughs> Challenging. Challenging. How many people were pushed further outside of their comfort zone with ten than they were with five? How many people asked themselves this question? Can I change the original five back and that be part of the ten? <laughs> okay, so, so your mind's already working. Now think about what we're here to do today. We're talking about making change in what you and I do. We're talking about changes within the ranks of training and how we present it, how we design it, how we view it, how we track it, all of that, right? Now, you know people have different reactions or responses to change, correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, everybody, you've probably done this before, but fold your arms if you don't already have them folded. I say that because usually in the back of one of my classes, somebody always is sitting in the back of the room with their arms crossed yes, like this, exactly. tapping their feet going, teach me how to do it. <laughs> so, now, you got one hand up, one hand down, correct? When I say go, you're going to unfold them and fold them the other way. Ready, set, go. 
Right? Oh, I have one, yeah. one guy in one of my classes goes, there is him, no way. <laughs> now, how many people got there? How many people feel uncomfortable there? How many people already went back to the old way? <laughs> how many people got dressed back to the way that they walked in the door before they sat down from the previous exercise? Yes. Now, don't you know that we have a tendency as human beings to always revert back to what we know and what we're comfortable with, right? Change is going to be uncomfortable. But here's the thing. Research shows that people do not resist change itself. Most of the time, people resist the way change is thrust upon them. Does that make sense? Because when we asked you to do the five, you felt a little outside your comfort zone, a little uncomfortable, but most everybody did it. Right? So if we were to say to you, hey, we're going to do this slight little change to what we're doing in training, most people go, eh, not a big deal, put me a little bit outside my comfort zone, but I can handle that. Now we start going, okay, we're, we're going to make some major, we're, we're not calling leadership training anymore, we're calling training, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're creating levels, whereas people get new certification. Now we're beyond 10 visible changes. Now we're at 20 to 50 and how people are going to react to that and how far outside of their comfort zone are they going to be. You see it? So now it's not necessarily the change. It is what do we know and how comfortable do we feel about the change, right? Is all change bad? No. Is all change good? No. No, we're not saying all change is good. But here's the real interesting <coughs> question. Is there good in all change? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How will you know if you don't look for it first? Right? How many people, when we asked them to make the 10 visible changes, said, I'm, to be honest, I'm done, this is too much? Oh, okay, thank you. At least we have one honest person in the room. All right? Because there's some people who go, okay, I could have handled it up to this point here, but now it's so far outside my comfort zone, I'm, bye. Right? And, and you, you probably know some folks. Don't point, because they might be in the room, who feel that kind of uncomfortability, especially in the midst of most change focuses on things that we either don't know or are uncomfortable with. So it is the unknown, mostly, that people are afraid of, not necessarily the change itself. Would you agree that's true? Yes. Right? So what we're here to do today is to demonstrate for you some of the things that we believe are the direction for training for the association and the reason for them, right? To give you an absolute demonstration of what we're talking about. Have you experienced it? Actually do some of it because we'll, we'll show you later, education doesn't do anything, right? I mean, you have this really great book and said, boy, this is a great idea. As soon as I'm able, I'm going to go put this into practice. How many, ever, how many actually did put it into practice when they went and tried to do something with it? Right? There's a gap between what you know and what you can actually demonstrate about what you know. Correct? Right? Knowledge doesn't change performance. We're going to talk about that. So the shift that we're looking to do is to take us from talking about something which is knowledge that doesn't help somebody when they walk immediately out of the room, to teaching people and instructing people how to apply the things that we're teaching them. And the only way to do that is to actually get them to do it while they're here. So that you can coach them, they can feel some confidence and comfortability in what we're talking about. So when they leave, they can go, and eh, this is in the realm of the five changes. I think I might be able to do this. Instead of walking out and going, oh my God, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm beyond 10 changes. Forget this. And then it's gone. Does that make sense? I mean, do you think that ever happens in some of the, some of the things that we do, right? Just one question, Joe. You yeah. said knowledge does not change performance, but sometimes it does. Well, we're going to talk about that, and thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. If we don't cover it in that particular section, then come back and ask me the question okay. again. All right? Now, one of the things that you saw happen here was 
when we started the workshop after the introduction, did I get up here and start talking to you about what we're going to do, what the objectives are today, what, what did we do? We got you right into action. That is the first new skill, a new concept for us to get into our heads. That the first thing that you do in the start of a training module is to get people on their feet or get them into some sort of an action. Now, why would we do that? You can take a look at some of the points that are up on the screen. So the first one is, it shows that this is going to be different from anything that they've been involved in before, right? The second thing is that's the demonstration that we're going to be interactive in what we do. It's just not going to be here. I'm going to look at the screen. I'm going to read some slides. You're going to be bored out of your mind. You're going to take some notes away, and you're going to mark a 10 because I need the score. Right? So, so we're going to do some things a little bit differently and help people understand the reason for doing that. Number three is it shifts the attention of the person walking in from what their mind was on when they got here to what you want it to be on when they're here. Right? I don't know about you, but I walked in here with my mind on a variety of other things. Right? I mean, I'm recovering from food poisoning and you know, oh, wow. cancer surgery and you know, all kinds of stuff. So, so if there's something doesn't cause me to shift that mindset. Where am I going to be if you don't have my attention? I'm just going to be in my own world. And you find a lot of times the people coming to seminars that we present are sort of in their own world. And they stay in their own world because probably a lot of times they're not being engaged. Well, they come in with preconceived notions. Yeah, exactly true. Right. So we're going to shift that attention. The next thing that we want to do is lay the foundation for what this thing is all about, right? So the exercise that you do is connected to the topic that you're going to be teaching them about, right? So our topic today is changes that are going to be made for trainers, for us. So what was the, what was the exercise? The exercise was change, and how you want change? Appropriate? Yes, Absolutely. Yes. So when you and I think about this opening exercise, opening activity, what can I do to get people involved, shift their attention, lay the foundation, and also set the stage for what's coming? Now everybody's in it, everybody's with you, and boom, we are there in the top. Does that make sense? First huge skill, First huge difference. Every new training module that comes out from here on in will have an opening exercise opportunity in it. In the instructor guide, which is a whole new instructor guide, we will give you samples or options of exercise to choose from. If you have others, use them. Make sure they're relevant, make sure that they do what we're standing here talking about doing. Makes sense. Yes, so not only to get their mindset where you are, yours too. I mean, I just came from one training and I go to another training yeah. and that really helps. Okay, this is what you do. You are absolutely correct. Yep. And you've got to be there as much more than they being there. Because if you're not there, how in the world are you expecting them to be there? Right? <coughs> so is this going to be the same opening? For each, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I mean, for for example, if I'm teaching a road captain class, right, and there's a certain opening for that, the next time I teach a road opening, a road captain is going to have the same opening. You have the opportunity to make any opening activity that you want. Okay. The the suggestion that we're making is make it relevant and set up the topic. That's the only thing, okay. right? But as much variety as you can put into any module that you teach, the better it's going to be. All right? We're, again, we're going to give you some suggestions, but I've got uh, two four-inch manuals that um, are, are uh, called Games Trainers Play. I don't know if anybody has them. They're, they're, they're beautiful, but they're from the 80s, but there's still, still great stuff in them. I mean, you can teach for the next 10 years, 
with all the exercises and opening activities that are in that in that book. You can do a search on the internet for as many opening activities as you can possibly think of, right? But be creative. That's why we're in front of the room and not putting somebody in front of a computer screen to read the slides. Because they need us in front of the room to make this relevant. Make sense? Okay. Now, again, we are going to do everything that we're going to be talking about. So your job right now is to pick a topic that you're about to teach and write the topic down wherever you want to put it in that slide on page one. You're actually not going to teach the subject. What you are going to do is you're going to think of an opening activity that you are going to run right now for that topic. So write down the topic and think of what kind of an activity could I get people into that would set the stage and get people interactive from the very beginning. Go, give you a couple of seconds. GW topic, is that what we're doing? It doesn't even matter what type it is. <clears throat> okay, here I got one. Yeah. On your head so I can hear if you're listening. Okay, super. <laughs> All right, good. So uh, let's see, here's what we're gonna do. Everybody point to the ceiling. You're gonna look around your group because someone sitting at your table is oozing and exuding leadership and confidence, and I want you to identify and point to them. Ready, set, go! <laughs> All right, very good. If you got the finger the most, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a trainer and ask that question, you gotta be really careful, you know, as far as how to ask that. But, all right, the person who uh, got all the confidence in the room, please stand. Oh, please stand, please stand, good for you. All right, here's what you're gonna do. You've got uh, <coughs> a minute to get your group, your table, into your action to open up your workshop. Well, whatever so you're going to do to get them involved get and in out. action okay. about your ready? topic. Ready, set, go! We need bridge. Okay, please stop. Thank your, uh, your group leader if you think you did a good job and even if you didn't. Yeah. All right, next person, please stand. You've got a minute. To the right. Next person to the right. Sorry about that. Next person to the right. Please stand. Any, anybody is right. It doesn't matter. You got a minute to get your group involved in your topic. Ready. Set. Go. Okay. Please stop. Thank you, trainer. Very quick question. If this was the only thing that we taught you, would training modules change? Yes. yes. Would they be better? Yes. yes. Okay. Every single one of the things that we're going to go over today are just as practical and just as interdependent on the things that we're talking about as what you just experienced. Okay. And what do you think if this was the only direction that training was taking, do you think it's a half decent direction going? Okay, so now we're in the one, two, three changes to your appearance books. All right? we're, we're, we're moving to five, six, seven, eight, right? But so far, we're in the one, two, three, you're doing all right, right? Okay, good. Now, one piece of coaching, and as we go through this, as we go through some refreshers and start training some of these nuances, um, you're going to see even more effectiveness in the things that you do. Very, very quick. It may sound like no big deal, but it really is. And in future trainings, I'll get into the reason why. But so many new trainers and so many existing trainers that haven't been trained this way say, here's what I want you to do, right? Or I want you to please this, right? In any training environment whatsoever, you're never anymore allowed to say I, because they don't care what you want, right? If you want people to take an action, tell them to take an action. Please stand. Not, I want you to stand, right? You tell them what to do, they'll do it. 
tell them with a smile on your face, they'll be happy to do what you ask them to do. Does that make sense? Real, real small, but it, it gets your mind focused on the fact that this is not about you, it's about them. That's the reason why we're here. Okay? Now, next. <coughs> there are five things that influence how people perceive you in front of the room. We call them the star image concepts. You'll see them on the screens. Attitude control, can you read them? No. Okay. <laughs> can you read them in the book? <laughs> No, the first one is attitude control. The second one down to the right is interpersonal skills. The third on the bottom of the star is communication skills. Next is technical competence. And the fifth is appearance. What was the first one? Attitude, attitude control. control. These five components influence the way people perceive you in front of the room. Now, think about this for a second. Have you known someone standing in front of the room who just looked like they were dressed to the nines, looked so composed and so well-dressed that you were looking for nuggets coming out of their mouth until the first word came out? And then you went, oh my God, how long is this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been there? Don't point, just in case person's in the room. Yeah. All right, so appearance is one thing, but if the person can't communicate, <coughs> it affects your perception, yes. right? Yes. I could communicate extremely well. And uh, the, the, the greatest story is in the, the first couple of, of um, presentations that I gave in the association, um, I dress the way I normally dress when I train, which is a certain time, right? Now, I, to me, that's the way that I believe somebody should be dressed in front of the room. I had the person over there mentioning no names who came up to me with the scissors just like that and said, if I see a tie on you next, you will never see that tie again, right? Now, so appearance affects the way people are perceived. Now, technical skills, what are we talking about as far as trainers? Our technical skills is the knowledge that we have about the subject, our, our technical skills about presentations, all of the things that influence whether we're really good at what we do, right? We can have all of that, but if we don't communicate very well, it's going to affect the way people perceive our abilities and the knowledge of what we know or don't know, right? So every single one of these <coughs> components interact with each other, and they're all equal. So as you start looking at these five, you ask yourself the question, if I were rating myself on a scale from one to 10, 10 being absolutely perfect, how would I rate myself in these five areas? And then you'll be able to say, hmm, now I understand why I might get some of the feedback that I got or why I didn't get some of the reaction that I that I wanted to get. Yes, ma'am? Joe, the more you do them, the more comfortable you feel. Yes. It was amazing. I did one training session and then we went to the other and the same person went to it and they said, shut it, you were so much more relaxed and interesting. Okay. <laughs> That's the same Good for time. you. Good for you. So again and what category would that fall in? Yeah, of the five. Could be communication. Communication is more, you know, what comes out of your mouth than how you listen. Attitude control, right? If I'm all nervous, I'm not controlling my attitude very well, right? And it could be technical ability. Um, attitude control is how I respond to if, if I'm impatient with the group and it comes across, that falls into attitude control. Yes, ma'am? We just did an education day. Um, our, my, our seminar was time management. Okay. So instead of focusing on time management, I did the opposite. All right. I was taking their their time. Yes. Because it says, can I have a minute of your time? So I took 55 minutes of their time. Okay. And they said, you're not focused. I'm like, I'm doing the opposite of what you should be doing. And so everybody was interacting with uh -huh. what I was doing. Okay. And it just made the whole thing go 
Good for you. So they got the point, right? Creativity is part of our technical competence, right? Part of our attitude control. A lot of things come into each one of these categories, right? Now, here's the other interesting thing. Not only the way people perceive you based on these five things, but it's the that perception that dictates the way they interact with you, right? So if you're not getting the interaction that you would like, it has nothing to do with group, right? How many trainers have you heard? Oh, I just had a bad group today. There, there are no bad groups today, right? It's the responsibility of the person in the room, right, to control those five elements. Because what you do in interacting with, with me is dependent on what I do with each one of those five things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, the question now becomes, now that you know that, well, let's delve a little deeper into what does each one of these things mean. So, the last person to do the demonstration in group, please raise your hand, okay? You are the team discussion leader for this next exercise, okay? And the discussion leader has three jobs. Number one, your job is to make sure that everyone participates equally. Right? You know, some people in groups have a tendency to talk too much. Some people who really have the good stuff to say usually don't talk. <laughs> so you have to pull those guys out. You want everybody to participate equally. That's first job. Your second job is to make sure that you participate last as the team leader. Why? So that you're not overbearing and telling them your opinion is the top. That's correct, because whether you see it or they consciously perceive it, as the leader, they're going to lean on you for what they think you know the right answer. So if you say an answer, everybody else is going to say, Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. Did you ever find that? Unless you're married. Unless you're married. Yeah, that's all I do. And, and we, have a new, we have a new couples therapy workshop coming out that's going to deal with that. But, but what we want to do is we want to create and promote the creativity and the interaction. Right? Whether we're standing in front of the room or whether we're leading the group itself. The way to do that, it comes into technical skills, technical competence, and one of them is to understand how to facilitate a discussion, right? Everybody participate, participates equally, you share last. Number three, if you're leading a regular team in a, a chapter meeting or business meeting or a, something else, you're going to make sure that everybody has an activity to get involved in after the meeting is over. This is that, that, not that kind of thing, but this time, your third role is to summarize the discussion and then be able to give us a summary of what the discussion was like in the group so that we can glean the information from your group. All right? So you're going to have about three minutes to answer the question that's up on the screen, which is how do we demonstrate very high levels of each one of these five components? The attitude control, and the rest of the five. Everybody understand what we're doing? Team team discussion leaders, do you understand what we're doing? Yes. Nine your head? Yes? Okay, very good. You got three minutes. Right, you set, go! Okay. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. You got about 90 seconds left, just pace yourself. Okay, please stop. Thank you very much. In a minute, we're going to thank you. In a minute, we're going to ask team leaders to please stand and give us the benefit of the discussion. If you hear something that your group didn't talk about, where you go, ah, I should remember that. That's the reason that you got the book, write it down. Now, one of the things that, um, another technique as an aside, every once in a while I'm just going to pop in and out of character, right? So I'm out of character now putting them, my coach hat on, saying, did you notice that when I gave the, the direction for the group interaction, 
I gave you a time frame so that you could judge the discussion, right? And then I gave you marks along that time frame so that you can guide yourself in the way that it goes. If you use this technique, which you should, right, and you put people in group discussion, <coughs> make sure that you give them a time frame so that they can sort of judge whether it's consciously or subconsciously, and then give them some periods along the way. Oh, oh my God, I got two left. I've only got a minute. Let's get going here. Right? Because people have a tendency to just sort of talk about things and, and lose, lose time. Make sense? Okay. We're back at Team Lee's. Please stand. And one at a time, just so that everybody doesn't get, hear all the right answers from this guy over here and then try to figure out how to say create a ditto from this side of the room. Just give us one thing.